Wow, thank you. I can tell you Tom Osborne needed one of those degrees dealing with the group that I came in with. <clears throat> but I do want to thank the association today. Uh, this amazing award is one I'll cherish forever. And in listening to what I've accomplished, I'm not sure I resemble that person, but I'm trying. I do want to thank Ann Talbot. Uh, obviously, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of work to put together the nomination, and I appreciate that. But I do want to thank her especially for caring. She cared enough that she pulled together a group when I was a candidate stinner. And that group sat down with me and tried to educate me on mental and behavioral health, about what our locality was about, what our needs were. And I can tell you, I only understood about 50% of what they told me. But my takeaway was access to care, workforce. Those were two elements. A growing need for mental and behavioral health. It also included talking about uh, the fact that mental health and behavioral health is curable. That was something new to me. I had no idea that it's treatable and curable. I was in banking 30 years. I was in public accounting before that, so I'm boring. I didn't have, I didn't have that type of exposure, but it was interesting, as I continued to, to work through my campaign, continued to visit with teachers, with school superintendents, with judges, with law enforcement, all through the panhandle. One of their major issues was mental and behavioral health, and mental and behavioral health problems. So I guess my, one of my messages to today is to get involved in the political process, get involved early. Get involved when people are candidates. Get to know them, create relationships. Get to know their staff. And I can tell you that Ann has a personal relationship with the staff that I have that helps me in the state legislature. That's all helpful stuff, but continue on. Continue on emailing, writing letters, educating your legislators about those issues. That's how we get it done. We have to know, we have to have data, and we have to be able to frame issues. Now it's amazing to me when I take a look at my first one of my first bills was on the Child Advocacy Center. Our Child Advocacy Centers needed to be expanded because of a growing problem in child abuse. Out home, out home placements is a big problem in the state of Nebraska. A lot of it has to do with abuse. A lot of it has to do with substance abuse, with neglect. Interestingly, we're short, uh, we're short like a lot of states are, we had to deal with a $1.1 $1 .1 billion, billion budget shortfall last year, and that's, a, that's out of a $9 billion budget, and it was all cuts, no revenue. Well, interestingly, we had to deal with another $200 million. But the interesting part of that is, is that our priorities is on corrections. We actually are increasing dollars to corrections. It's interesting as things circle around again. One of our biggest deficit increase requests is from child welfare. Child welfare, $55 million is the request of increase in child welfare because of out of home placement. Remember the child, the child advocacy centers? It starts early folks, early intervention. That was another takeaway that I forgot to say. And early intervention is, is absolutely key. But as we look at our budget and we look at corrections, one of the things we did last year in appropriations was to, was to take some of the increased appropriations because there is over a thousand of our inmates that are eligible for parole, but they can't because they haven't been through programming. What do we need? More social workers, more, more uh, psychologists, colleges more programming and we can't get that so we allocated dollars for an intern program directly related to the prison system so that our University of Nebraska UNO and Union College it turns out psychologists that works on that are able to plug into our, our uh, prison system and help with that problem state of Nebraska is number two in the United States in overcrowding on prisons. We're right behind Alabama now. For football, that wouldn't be bad. <laughs> but this isn't, this isn't a football game, and these are real problems. 
and it keeps cycling back, cycling back early on. You know, it, the linkage is amazing. We talk about dropout rates. Why do we have dropout rates? You know, you have to go back and you have to take a look at, are we preparing kids for school? And, and of course, in my district, actually, uh, we have a, a six-pence program that starts very early, teaching parents how to be parents. And that linkage will, will drive through right to this prison population. What you do on the ground today with early intervention, if we can get into the schools and we have a panhandle beginnings, is a legislation that I've sponsored, can't go through this year because it has a fiscal note to it. So nothing with fiscal note gets through. But that panhandle beginnings talks about that intensive care, that kid that gets thrown out of school that really needs to have intensive care. We have, a, we have a day center, and we're hoping that with the education, educational component and the day center, we'll be able to get to those children that will do harm to themselves or harm to somebody else. And hopefully we can identify those and give them the needed help that they need to have. Those are the type of initiatives that we need to have at ground level. That's the information that we need to have. What do we need to do workforce-wise? What do we need to do intern-wise? What do we need to do in our communities to address some of these problems? Because I can guarantee you, you will have allies. You will have allies in law enforcement. You will have allies in schools. You will have a whole host of allies that can come to the legislatures, come to the legislators, the senators, the representatives, and be advocates for your cause. The timing obviously is right. I hate to use disastrous situations as catalysts, but we have that. We have a society right now that's very dangerous. We need, to, we need to address that. And this is the group that really is the spark and the catalyst and the smart people that can do something about it. So, thank you. And now, Dr. Eleanor Gilcott.